Before jumping into the questionnaire, let's first just take a quick look at the Form 1040 to see where the dependents would be recorded. They're going to be down here under the dependents. Typically, we'll have the name, social security number, relationship, and then checking off if they qualify for the child tax credits or the credit for other dependents. That's the first thing that will typically be coming to mind when you're thinking about the dependent. What's the benefit of the dependent, usually child tax credit or other dependent credit. But there could also be an impact on a change to the filing status, possibly moving someone up from single to head of household. If I go to page two, there could possibly be a change in the tax tables being used if there was a change to filing status, such as single to head of household. But mainly we're talking here line 19, the child tax credit or credit for other dependents. Now, normally it's pretty straightforward to see whether someone is gonna be qualifying uh, as a child, because if it's a young child, then obviously you would think that they would be a dependent fairly straightforward, but you can imagine situations where there's gonna be gray area, a lot of situations, in which case you might want to go through the formal questionnaire. Now, as we think of the formal questionnaire, we usually think first in terms of a qualifying child and does the child then qualify for the child uh, tax credit because that is going to be usually the most beneficial uh, component. And then if they don't qualify for the child tax credit, do they qualify for the other uh, dependents? So then that's going to be the format of the questionnaire. So let's jump on over to the questionnaire here and you can see the general kind of questions will be one. Uh, do you have a qualifying child? We're going to go through those basically questions. Step two is your qualifying child is is your qualifying child your dependent? on question number two and then question number three or step three, does your qualifying child qualify you for the child tax credit or credit for other dependents? So if they're a qualifying child, then do they qualify to give you the biggest benefit, which is gonna be the child tax credit? If not, then they're gonna to default to the other uh, dependents credit. Four, is your, qual is your qualifying relative your dependent? So now we're moving from qualifying child to a qualifying uh, relative and asking if they're a dependent, basically forfeiting the whole concept of getting the child tax credit, basically moving to see whether we qualify for the other dependent credit. Step five, does your qualifying relative qualify you for the credit for other dependents? And then you've got your definitions and whatnot down below. So you can see the structure of this qualifying child versus other dependent when they're a qualifying child, the question is, do they qualify you for the child tax credit, which will be more beneficial if not other dependents. If they're not a qualifying child and they're an other dependent, then the only thing you're looking to get then from a tax standpoint would be the other dependent. Okay, let's go into it in more detail. So step one, do you have a qualifying child? So a qualifying child is a child who is your son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, brother, sister, stepbrother, stepsister, half brother, half sister, or descendant of any of them. For example, your grandchild, niece, or nephew. So it's kind of like a relationship test, quite broad there. And under age 19 at the end of 2022 and younger than you. So obviously they would normally be younger than you, you would expect, unless there was an unusual situation or your spouse if filing jointly. Uh, so we're really usually looking at this threshold of under 19, but uh, the, it or it moves up to 24. So under age 24 at the end of 2022, a student, which is defined later and younger than you. So we've got the threshold of being 19, but that 19 pushes up to uh, 24 for, for a qualifying child if they're a student. And then of course, we'll have to look in the definition of what qualifies for a student because we could get into the weeds in terms of the gray area as to whether they qualify for that. So, or any age and permanently and totally disabled. So if they're totally disabled, then the age uh, requirement is removed. And uh, who don't provide over half their support for 2022. So that could be like the support test. If you want more questions about the support test, you can see publication 501, but basically you provide more than half of the support and who isn't filing a joint return for 2022. So usually, obviously, if they were filing a joint return, return, they wouldn't usually be a dependent of yours because now they're filing as a joint return because they're married or something like that. But there could be an exception to that rule. 
uh, or is filing a joint return for 2022 only to claim a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid. So if you have that exception, you can take a look at publication 501 for that. So again, general age rule 19 pushes up to 24. If they're a student, that's the age uh, test. And then do you provide the support test in essence? Uh, you provide over half the support for 2022 and then the filing uh, test do you know they don't file a joint return if they file a joint return normally that would be uh non you know then they'd be fine married filing joint and who lived with you for more than half of 2022 so if the child didn't live with you for the required time you can see exceptions to time to lived with you so now they lived with you for more than half of 2022 so you've got the support test and uh the lived with you test here and the exceptions could include things like, well, what would happen if they were uh, at a, a medical area or getting treatment or something like that? Does that account for them living with me for more than half of 2022? Caution, if the child meets the conditions to be a qualifying child of any other person other than your spouse, if filing jointly uh, for 2022, see qualifying child of more than one person later. You can imagine situations where you have a joint custody situation where it's like, okay, now this child actually qualifies for two individuals here. And so what do I, what do I do in that situation? So situation. you can, we could dive into the weeds of that particular situation, but we won't right now. So do you have a child who meets the conditions uh, to be your qualifying child? So given those questionnaires, if the answer is yes, then we go to step two. If no, then we go to step four. So if yes, then we want to move forward and say, do we qualify now for the qualified child tax credit or for the other dependent credit for the qualifying child? If they don't qualify then, and I say no here, then we're going to say, do they qualify for an other dependent, possibly getting the lower credit in that case? Step two, is your qualifying child your dependent? So one, was the child a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, U.S. resident alien, or resident of Canada or Mexico? If there's questions on that, you can see publication 519. So the definition of a U.S. national or U.S. resident alien, uh, if the child was adopted, see exception to the citizen test later. If yes, then we continue. If no, you can't claim the child as a dependent. So we'll assume yes. Was the child married? So. Uh, yeah, uh, if yes, see married person later. If no, then we're going to continue. Typically, we would assume they weren't married because if they were married, then they wouldn't be a dependent because they would be filing a married filing joint return, we would assume normally. So could you or your spouse of filing jointly be claimed as a dependent on someone else's 2022 return? If the person who claimed you on their 2022 return is not required to file and isn't filing a 2022 tax return or is filing a 2022 return only to claim a refund withheld in income tax or estimated tax paid, check no. So, so obviously it would muddy the water a bit if you yourself were going to be able to be claimed by someone else as a dependent. So because you would think that if someone is a dependent of yours, then normally you wouldn't be a dependent of someone else, right? So that would, again, be another kind of somewhat more unusual type of situation, although obviously that would could ha will happen in, in life a, a lot. So if yes, stop, you cl can't claim any dependents, complete the rest of Form 1040. If no, so you can claim this child as a dependent, meaning you can't be claimed as anyone else as a dependent, so then you're here. Complete columns one through three of the dependent section on page one of form 1040 or 1040 SR for this child, then go to step three.